Hey, what's up, y'all? It's Steve again, Harmless Rebel. Time for another uh, video. This one's kind of an update. Um, some of the stuff I've shown before, um, I pulled out the spin. So I was on the Metal Round Table. Um, if you guys aren't familiar with that, I'll put a link down below on Tuesday. And the topic that we discussed for a little over an hour was Japanese pressings. So I pulled out a bunch of Japanese CDs of various uh, types. And then uh, pulled out a bunch of vinyl. I showed some of this in the video, some of it I didn't. Uh, but recommend you check it out. The, the Metal Roundtable is a, a, a great podcast, live stream. Um, anyway, for all you metal heads out there. Uh, so you've got uh, Rob Caldwell, uh, who is a... Uh, he was a, mag a magician, a musician uh, in a band years ago. Um, he's a, He does... A, Bomb work. He runs Bombwork Studios where he does uh, remastering. A lot of the uh, stuff I show from No Life Till Metal and Bombworks and Retroactive. And, and he just did the, the Nevermore uh, remasters that sound amazing. Um, so he's responsible for that. He, he does a fantastic job. Uh, Carcass John, who is an artist... I'm trying to think if I have anything right here. I don't think I have anything right here, but he's done a, a bunch of album covers. Um, actually, Gamma Side had a compilation come out a few years ago that he did the cover for, uh, just off the top of my head. Actually, if you guys saw uh, one of the, the last updates I did not too long ago, uh, Carcass John did the uh, Vindicator, uh, the demoed, demol demo demolished, whatever it was, whatever that Vindicator was. Um, he did that that skull cover that was on there, which is pretty cool. And then uh, Scott Waters, who uh, is the singer in uh, Ultimatum. Um, he was in Once Dead. What else was he in? Uh, Vengeance Rising. Anyway, uh, really good podcast. It, we had a great time. Uh, a lot of really good discussion between us and between the people that were that were live streaming it. Um, I think we counted six different countries. Uh, represent were represented in the audience which is pretty cool uh anyway so uh i'll put a link down below check that out again it was a lot of fun and then uh here's some of the stuff that i showed a few of these are, are newer uh, pretty much all of this with the exception of one or two i got within the last six or seven months there's a couple that are a little bit older um that i pulled out specifically for the show um this one actually just came in today um Bon Jovi is my wife's favorite band. Um, I like two albums from them, Slippery When Wet and then uh, New Jersey. And even those two albums, there's only a few songs that I like. Uh, but she loves it. It's, bon Jovi is her favorite. Um, I get her tickets every time he comes to town. Uh, but uh, So this one just came in today. Man, I see these things sell for crazy money online all the time. $65, $75. Bucks. It's definitely not worth it to me. Um, but I found this one for, I believe it was $35. So, went ahead and picked that one up. Is that something on there? This one, this album cover always takes me back to, what was it, 86 when this came out? Yeah, 86. Um, I was in Japan at the time. And I remember every every music store we, we walked into, um, that photo was plastered on the walls. Um, you just couldn't get away from it. Uh, and we didn't even have, uh, radio, uh, li like what you guys are familiar with here. Uh, we had AF, what was it? AFN, AFRTS. Yeah. AFRTS, the armed forces radio and television service. And we had one station. So they would have little blocks here and there where they would play rock, but we didn't listen to it that much. Um, most of our music came from, uh, you know, the music stores buying stuff, um, Anyway, uh, these are both recent pickups, and these are really cool. I didn't even know uh, what these were when I bought them, other than I knew that they were Japanese Kiss pressings. Um, but I picked up Destroyer. Um, this is an upgrade. I already had a copy of Destroyer, but it wasn't in this good a condition. Um, and I noticed this little thing over the Kiss faces, this little message right there. But I wasn't aware of what it was. Uh, I was actually kind of worried this might have been some kind of bootleg or knockoff or something. But I got them for a good price. So I went ahead and grabbed them. Um, and then I got home and did some research. And apparently this was the initial run in Japan. Um, 
and it basically says that uh, it comes with a, a, it's a limited edition pressing with with a poster. Um, now I looked online, the posters are seem to be uh, super rare. This one didn't have the poster. Um, that's not why I bought it. It's just in fantastic condition. Um, but copies with the poster seem to be going for like three, four hundred bucks. Now these these go a little bit more than the regular uh, first Japanese pressings without that message, but uh, I still got a, a good deal on this. Um, now this one, same type of thing. So Dynasty. So same thing. It's got this note right there that says uh, it comes with an exclusive poster. However, this one did not come with a poster inside the record. Apparently, it was a a, a point of sir or a, 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 what is it? Not point of service. Uh, point of purchase poster where they had, uh, I've, I've read, I've seen different things. I've, I've, I've read 10,000 and I've read 15,000, but they were distributed to the different stores. And when you bought this, they would hand you the poster. Um, I can't find a single copy uh, online anywhere uh, where it shows what that poster actually looks like. Um, and as many copies as this sold, 10, whether it's 10,000 or 15,000, that's nothing. Uh, for the amount of copies that sold of this that that first year so you know it'd be cool to see what that poster looks like but uh they, they just don't seem to be out there i'm sure there's some hardcore kiss collectors that may have one um next up uh one of these uh, i've had for a while i just pulled it out for the show uh and that's uh life live from thin lizzie i'm slowly working on right now i'm kind of trying to get the the uh the priest japanese pressings the thin lizzie and the aerosmith are the main ones that i'm working on right now i'd love to get the maiden ones but the just in the last two years the maiden ones have shot through the roof uh so you know if i run across I, i've run across a couple for a good deal uh they don't pop up often though but uh this one was really cool i, I love this live show um I would love to get Live and Dangerous, a Japanese pressing. I have a really nice German pressing of that one. Or maybe it's a... No, it's a German pressing. And then this is one that I just got recently uh, fighting uh, on the uh, Vertigo label. Uh, this one was really nice, though. I love this album. I love all the Thin Lizzy albums, let's be honest. Next up, a little bit of Ted Nugent. Uh, I pulled th this one I just recently bought at one of the local stores. This was in their inbox for relatively cheap. I want to say it was like 15, maybe it was under 20 bucks if I remember correctly, but, uh, weekend warriors. And then when I was in Phoenix a couple years ago, I actually met up with Scott Waters and, and Trog and we spent the day going from shop to shop. Well, the next day I went and hit a couple shops that we missed and ended up picking up this one for for like 20 25 bucks and what's cool about this one is this one's a promo copy now this one's kind of weird because usually and i'll show you a promo copy in a little while usually there's a little red sticker that wraps around uh that says uh does it say demonstration or pr promotion i can't remember exactly what it says but it's in uh, uh it's either hiragana or katagana but uh this one doesn't have the sticker, but it does have the, the, the little promotional square on the vinyl itself. So this one was a really cool spin. Um, and I love this. I mean, I've got it right there as well. So that was a really cool find. And then some of the priests, like I said, I've been slowly grabbing the priest pressings. Uh, Sad Wings of Destiny. Man, I, this album is so good. Um, this one just doesn't get enough love. Uh, it's, it's such an amazing album. Uh, the only two priests that I still need uh, from the 70s or 80s are Rock and Rockarola, which is fine. I actually have an Obi for Rockarola, but I don't. I don't have a copy of the album. And I've got, I believe, a German pressing, a U.S. pressing, and a U.K. pressing. Um, and then I also need Ram It, uh, Ram It Down. I don't have that one. Do I have Turbo? Actually, I believe I have Turbo. But, uh, Sin After Sin, first pressing. Just 
just reading the back on this one, sorry. I'm also working on the white label promos. I've got most of the white label promos for Priest as well now. Uh, Killing Machine. I'm going to try to find a, a little bit nicer copy of this one. It sounds good. Um, but it's got a little bit of wear. So this is one I'll definitely be trying to find a nicer, nicer copy of. Uh, and then this one just came in a couple of weeks ago, maybe a week or two ago. Uh, point of entry. Probably a bottom tier, but this is, man, this is still such a great, a, gr a great album. Um, you know, everybody talks about how disappointed they are with this album. And at the time, when you compare it to the albums that bookended, I get it. But, uh, and it definitely feels like this one was thrown together in rush just to get an album out. But uh, going back and listening to it, uh, such a great album. Uh, let's see, I'll save that one for last. But yeah, and I mentioned the promo and I showed this one. Uh, at, so I picked this one up at the last record store, a record store, at the last record show here in Atlanta that was uh, three months ago. And actually, I'm actually getting ready. I'm, I'm going to set up, I'm going to have a booth myself at the record show on Sunday. This is Friday night, so the day after tomorrow. Uh, I'm going to have about four boxes of records. Two were, uh, I did a big purge uh, at the beginning of the pandemic I talked about where I got rid of probably like 800 albums. And I still had like two or three boxes of the, of the nicer albums that I wasn't just going to blow out. Um, and then I've, I've got like two more boxes of just duplicates. You know, I, I don't need six copies of the Led Zeppelin albums. Um, so I've, I've kept it to the, the, the Japanese pressings and like, um, actually, uh, either the Japanese pressings, I've, I'm keeping the UK pressings and then, uh, this, the collection that came out a couple years ago that sound really, anyway, a lot of duplicates. Uh, anyway, yeah, Y and T, Mean Street. So here is that promo. Does it actually say anything on that? No. Uh, the, the promo sticker that you see on most Japan Japanese promos, and then they'll have a little white box on the record itself, or a little box that has basically the same um, symbols there. So Y and T, Mean Street again, fantastic album. So this is one I picked up when I was in Phoenix last year. Uh, Tells of the Unexpected from Frank Marino and Mahogany Rush. Uh, if you guys haven't checked out Frank Marino or Mahogany, the, the earlier Mahogany Rush albums, you're really missing out. Um, he does a, a couple great covers on here, but um, his cover of All Along the Watchtower is fantastic. Um, he definitely eats at the altar of Jimi Hendrix. He always has. His first two albums are basically reworked uh, Hendrix riffs. And you still hear it in all of his records, but man... He is such an amazing guitar player, and, and his albums are always fantastic. Definitely recommend checking him out. This is one uh, This is one of those records I always heard people talk about, uh, how great it was, and, and I, every time I found a copy, it just wasn't in good condition. Unfortunately, this one doesn't have the Obi, uh, but they're, they're getting hard to find with the Obi. And uh, this is an album I cannot recommend enough. Um, I don't care if you're into heavy metal, hard rock, AOR. Um, this one kind of gets put in, uh, you know, this is considered by most to be a new wave of British heavy metal album. Um, and that has more for the time, uh, is more about the time that it came out. Um, this was definitely a very contemporary album, more contemporary than the other new wave of British heavy metal albums that were more uh, paying tribute to the 70s Um and, and to their heroes. Now, there is some of that on this. There's definitely some Thin Lizzy. There's definitely some... Uh, uh, what's the other band? Some Thin Lizzy. Definitely some Wishbone Ash in here. Uh, but there's also a little bit of AOR. And, and not in the... Not the over-the-top over AOR from the 80s. But this is uh, Praying Mantis. Uh, I can't recommend this album enough. Uh, I've, I've had it for a few months now. And I play it uh, at least once a week since I got it th uh, three months ago. Uh, fantastic, fantastic album. I've heard that their 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 other albums are good as well, but I've I've heard that none of them are, are quite as good as that one. So next up, I wanted to show on, and I think I mentioned I didn't have the Obi for that one. I wanted to show on the the live stream that there were some Japanese pressings that didn't have Obis. And this is one of them. So this is Judas Priest locked in. Um, and this one had a hype sticker that, that kind of acted as an Obi. 
And one of the, uh, I think it was Carcass John showed some Pink Floyd that was the same way where it didn't have uh, the Obi, it had a, uh, a hype sticker instead. So that was uh, kind of a cool one that I wanted to uh, share. And a very good EP if you guys have not checked that one out. Let's see, down to the last few. Next up, Aerosmith Rocks. Um, my favorite Aerosmith album. Like I said, I'm, I'm slowly getting the Aerosmith. I've still got a few more. I really want to get their 80s stuff. Uh, Permanent Vacation, Pump. Um, when did uh, Get a Grip, I think, came out in the early 90s. I'd love to get a Japanese. Actually, I think Scott showed a Japanese pressing a Get a Grip. That would be awesome to get. But uh, So working on those, though. But I love this album. And then down to the last two. A little bit of uh, Led Zeppelin IV. Uh, picked this up about three or four months ago, the same place as um, I got those Kiss uh, Japanese pressings. I think they bought a large Japanese collection and they're slowly putting it out because it seems like every two weeks when I go there, they have a few new ones that weren't there before. So I don't know if they just have a, Jap a guy that's bringing in Japanese pressings slowly or if they bought a huge collection. And instead of just throwing it all out there, they're slowly um, putting it out uh, as needed. But uh, I've picked up some great stuff from them. But uh, Led Zeppelin 4. This one does not sound as good as the UK pressing I have. Or as good as the remasters from a couple years ago. But it's still cool to have. And then last but not least, this is one that I got about three, four months ago. Um, I really would love to find the rest of the collection. But man, these things are getting pricey. I would at least like to get uh, part two of this, but this is Keeper of the Seven Keys, part one from Halloween. That's it, guys. Again, check out that live stream. It was a lot of fun. I think you guys will really enjoy it. Um, and we touch on all kinds of stuff. It's not just metal. It is the Metal Roundtable, but we, we got into some other stuff as well. Uh, and it was just an enjoyable discussion about um, Japan and, and music collecting as a whole. Uh, so uh, again, I'll put a link down below that. Hope everybody's good. Uh, take care and I will, uh, I'll see you soon. Later VC.